Black holes are some of the most mysterious and terrifying objects in the universe. They are like cosmic monsters that devour everything in their path, leaving nothing behind. But how do they do that, and what would happen if you got too close to one? Join us by hitting the subscribe button and never miss out on our latest content. The secret of a black hole's power lies in its density and gravity. Density is how much stuff is packed into a given space. Gravity is the force that pulls everything together. A black hole is the ultimate example of density and gravity. It is what happens when a huge star dies and collapses into a tiny point. The point is so tiny that it has no size at all, but it still has all the mass of the star. That means it pulls everything around it with a force that nothing can resist, not even light. But how tiny is the point? And how much does it pull? Well, imagine taking a teaspoon of black hole material. A teaspoon of a black hole that weighs as much as the sun would be so heavy that it would sink through the earth and come out the other side. A teaspoon of a black hole that weighs as much as the earth would be so heavy that it would crush the moon to dust. But what if you tried to get a teaspoon of black hole material? Well, you would have to get very close to the black hole, and that would be a very bad idea. As you approach a black hole, you would feel its pull getting stronger and stronger. But it would not pull you evenly. It would pull your feet more than your head, or your front more than your back. This difference would stretch and squeeze you until you are ripped apart. This process is called spaghettification because you would end up like a long noodle. Even if you somehow survived spaghettification, you would still cross the black hole's point of no return, called the event horizon. Once inside, there is no way out. You would be doomed to fall deeper and deeper into the black hole until you reach the point. No one knows what happens at the point, but it is likely that nothing makes sense there. So, to escape from a black hole, you need to go very fast, almost as fast as light. But there is a problem. According to Einstein's theory, Nothing can go faster than light in empty space. The speed of light is the ultimate speed limit of the universe. As you approach the speed of light, your mass increases, your length contracts, and your time slows down. To reach the speed of light, you would need infinite energy, which is impossible. Therefore, once you are inside the event horizon, you are trapped forever. You would need to go faster than light to escape, which is impossible. But what if there is a loophole? What if there is a way to cheat the speed limit and escape from a black hole? Wormholes and warp drives are two hypothetical concepts that could allow faster-than-light travel or even time travel. They are based on solutions of Einstein's field equations, which describe how space and time are affected by mass and energy. However, they also face many challenges and limitations, both theoretical and practical. A wormhole is a hypothetical structure that connects two distant points in space or time via a tunnel. A wormhole can be visualized as a hole in a sheet of paper that leads to another hole on the same or a different sheet. An object inside this tunnel would be able to travel from one point to another faster than light would in normal space. Wormholes are consistent with the theory of general relativity, but whether they actually exist remains to be seen. Some physicists have suggested that wormholes could be created by manipulating the geometry of space-time, for example, by using exotic matter or negative energy. However, such matter or energy has not been observed or produced and may violate some physical laws or principles. Another possibility is that wormholes could be naturally occurring, for example, as a result of quantum fluctuations or cosmic strings. Some physicists have also speculated that black holes could be connected by wormholes, forming a network of shortcuts across the universe. However, there is no observational evidence for such wormholes, and they may be unstable or inaccessible. A warp drive is a hypothetical device that distorts the shape of space-time around a spacecraft, creating a bubble of flat space that moves faster than light. A warp drive can be visualized as a balloon that inflates and deflates, pushing and pulling the spacecraft along. An object inside this bubble would not move within it, but would be carried along as the bubble itself moves. A warp drive is also consistent with the theory of general relativity, but it also requires exotic matter or negative energy to work. One of the most famous models of a warp drive is the Alcubierre drive, proposed by physicist Miguel Alcubierre in 1994. The Alcubierre drive creates a wave of space-time that contracts space in front of the spacecraft and expands space behind it, allowing it to travel faster than light without violating the laws of physics. However, the Alcubierre drive also faces many challenges and limitations, such as the amount and nature of the exotic matter or negative energy needed, the causality and stability of the warp bubble, the effects of radiation and quantum fluctuations, and the possibility of time travel paradoxes. Moreover, the Alcubierre drive may not be able to bypass a black hole, since the event horizon would still prevent anything from escaping. Black holes are not eternal. 
They can lose mass and energy through a process called Hawking radiation, named after the physicist Stephen Hawking who predicted it in 1974. Hawking radiation is a quantum phenomenon that occurs near the event horizon of a black hole, the boundary beyond which nothing can escape. Hawking radiation is related to the existence of virtual particle pairs that constantly pop in and out of existence in the vacuum of space. Hawking radiation in detail. According to quantum theory, the vacuum of space is not empty, but filled with fluctuations of various fields, such as the electromagnetic field. These fluctuations can create pairs of particles and antiparticles, such as electrons and positrons, that appear and disappear in a very short time. These are called virtual particles because they are not real and cannot be observed directly. However, near the event horizon of a black hole, something different can happen. One of the virtual particles can fall into the black hole, while the other can escape to infinity. In this case, the virtual particles become real, and the escaping particle becomes part of the Hawking radiation. But where does the energy for creating these real particles come from? The answer is that it comes from the black hole itself. The particle that falls into the black hole has negative energy, which means that it reduces the mass and energy of the black hole. The particle that escapes has positive energy, which means that it carries away some of the mass and energy of the black hole. Therefore, Hawking radiation causes the black hole to lose mass and energy over time and to shrink in size and temperature. This process is very slow for most black holes, and it would take longer than the age of the universe for them to evaporate. Moreover, Hawking radiation does not solve the problem of what happens to the information that falls into a black hole, which leads to a paradox that we will discuss in the last section. But how slow is this process? And how much mass and energy does a black hole lose? Well, it depends on the size and temperature of the black hole. The smaller and hotter the black hole, the faster it radiates. The larger and colder the black hole, the slower it radiates. To understand how this works, we need to know how the temperature of a black hole is related to its mass. The temperature of a black hole is inversely proportional to its mass, which means that the smaller the mass, the higher the temperature. The temperature of a black hole is also proportional to the highest possible temperature in the universe, which is very, very hot. Using these relations, we can estimate the temperature of a black hole of any mass. For example, a black hole with the mass of the sun would have a very low temperature, much lower than the background radiation of the universe. This means that the black hole would absorb more radiation than it emits and actually grow in mass and energy. However, if the background radiation cools down enough in the far future, the black hole would start to lose mass and energy. It would take a very long time for the black hole to evaporate completely. A black hole with the mass of a human would have a very high temperature, much higher than the background radiation of the universe. This means that the black hole would radiate intensely and lose mass and energy very quickly. It would take a very short time for the black hole to evaporate completely in a burst of gamma rays. So, Hawking radiation is a way for black holes to lose mass and energy and eventually disappear. However, this process is very slow for most black holes, and it would take longer than the age of the universe for them to evaporate. Moreover, Hawking radiation does not solve the problem of what happens to the information that falls into a black hole, which leads to a paradox that we will discuss in the last section. Black holes are not only destructive, but also potentially useful. There are some theoretical ways to extract energy from them, or even use them for transportation. However, there are also some dangers associated with them, such as rogue black holes that could wander through the galaxy. One way to extract energy from a black hole is to use its accretion disk, the swirling disk of gas and dust that surrounds it. The accretion disk is heated by friction and gravity, and emits radiation that can be captured by a device called a Dyson sphere a hypothetical structure that would enclose the black hole and collect its energy. However, this method is limited by the efficiency of the accretion process, which depends on the mass and spin of the black hole. Another way to extract energy from a black hole is to use the Penrose process, a mechanism that exploits the rotation of the black hole. The Penrose process involves sending an object into the ergosphere, the region of space around the black hole where the rotation is so strong that everything is dragged along. The object then splits into two parts, one of which falls into the black hole, while the other escapes to infinity. The escaping part has more energy than the original object, and the energy difference is taken from the rotation of the black hole. The Penrose process can also work with virtual particles, pairs of particles and antiparticles that constantly pop in and out of existence in the vacuum of space. Near the event horizon of a black hole, one of the virtual particles can fall into the black hole, while the other can escape to infinity. In this case, the virtual particles become real, 
and the escaping particle becomes part of the Hawking radiation, a quantum phenomenon that causes the black hole to lose mass and energy over time. The Penrose process can achieve a maximum efficiency of 20.7% for an uncharged black hole and higher efficiencies for charged or rotating black holes. While black holes are fascinating and potentially useful, they are also dangerous. One of the dangers is the possibility of rogue black holes, black holes that are not bound to any galaxy or star system and wander through the universe. Rogue black holes can be formed by collisions between galaxies or by the disruption of the merging of two black holes. Rogue black holes are hard to detect because they do not emit any light and can only be revealed by their gravitational effects on nearby objects. If a rogue black hole passes near a star system, it can cause havoc by disrupting the orbits of planets, asteroids, and comets, or even swallowing them. A rogue black hole could also affect the life on a planet by altering its climate, tides, and magnetic field. However, the chances of encountering a rogue black hole are very low, because they are rare and the space between them is vast. Moreover, even if a rogue black hole approaches a star system, it would take a long time for its effects to be noticeable, and there would be enough time to prepare for the event. Therefore, Living with black holes is not impossible, but it requires caution and creativity. Black holes are not only sources of destruction, but also of energy and exploration. They are among the most mysterious and fascinating objects in the universe, and they challenge our understanding of physics and reality.